So in this lecture, we're going to talk some more about basic Unix commands related to uh, navigating the file system specifically. So in a Unix system, everything is treated like a file. So that includes um, things on the hard disks, um, you know, DVD ROMs. These aren't really <coughs> relevant these days. Printers, um, which would be what we call device files in the in the lingo of Unix. So there's ordinary files. These are the things that typically contain text or source code, characters, uh, things like that. But they can also be b binary files as well as ASCII or Unicode files, uh, things that have text or in them. Uh, there's directory files. The typical name for this in, in like a Windows environment would be a folder possibly. Uh, but in Unix, the, specific, you know, the, the correct name is directory. And, and the reason it's important to remember that is because the commands associated with that are, are uh, short for directory, D-I-R. Um, and then, like I said, there's device files. These are peripherals. You know, possibly these days it could be your iPhone or something like that. It's more meaningful than a hard disk or a, a ROM. <coughs> so there's a typical directory tree for a Unix machine. Um, they always have root at the top, so root is this uh, slash here. Um, and then some common, these won't be uh, necessarily included in every single Unix machine, but uh, likely they'll always have a bin folder. This is for binary applications. Um, uh, then a, a device directory, and inside of it would be certain things like hard disks, printers. <coughs> Another directory called home is usually where the users are stored. In this case, this example gives two users, Romeo and Juliet, and Romeo has a, is another directory inside of it called progs, progs, you know, for programs and some kind of database. Juliet has a hidden file, a, a .profile inside her folder. Uh, so anytime you see a, uh, a file that has a dot in front of the, of the name, that means it's hidden, which means it cannot be seen with the regular ls command. Uh, you have to use ls minus la, or rather ls minus l specifically for a long listing to see those hidden files. <coughs> um, some other, you know, binary libraries, temporary directory. SBIN is a location that a typical user would not have access to, but uh, possibly binaries that the system administrator needs would be found there. Uh, user is a common place for uh, additional uh, applications. And almost all Unix machines will have a place called user local. And this is where uh, a typical user um, like Romeo or Juliet could install their own applications. And the benefit to using user local is when the system is upgraded, it will not be touched in an upgrade. Uh, and then there's some other files. So this is not, uh, this is, you know, every single Unix machine will not have a directory structure that looks identical to this, but it'll be similar in nature. So, um, we have in, uh, path names, you know, so these are uh, names to directories, and there are a couple of shortcuts. You know, dot represents the current directory, two dot represents uh, the parent directory. And so uh, if we go to uh, Cloud9, we can see an example of that. So if I uh, say, for example, to, uh, cd to root, um, and then ls dot, that, that is the current directory or root. That's identical to saying ls slash ls root, like list what's in the current directory. And of course, the current directory in this case is root. Um, so if we were to then move into one of the subdirectories, like for example, bin. Uh, so now we're inside bin. There's a listing of all the files in bin. And if we wanted to then list, um, as a shortcut, list the directory above us, of course, which is the root directory, we would push uh, hit dot dot. So there's a listing of the of the root directory, and again, since we're in the bin directory, which is a subdirectory of of root, uh, the dot dot takes us back up to that level for the listing. So again, here's some examples. These are actually, um, you know. Uh, examples that were loaded from the active uh, notebook for these slides. So, you know, print working directory shows the directory for these slides. Um, if you were to change the directory into a subdirectory, images and print the working directory, you'd have it there. And then we could change directories back up one with, uh, with the CD there. So, some other important commands are to um, make and remove directories. 
and, and this is why it's kind of important to remember that these are directories and not folders, DIR, because the commands associated with them, uh, making a directory is, is make directory. So in this case, um, mkdir, make directory, uh, would create a file called uh, my dir, uh, my directory. So this creates a, 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 a subdirectory inside of the current directory. You can create multiple subdirectories on one command line. So this would create two subdirectories, my dir1, my dir2. And if and only if my dir1 exists, then this command will create a directory my dir2 inside my dir1. So if we go to cloud nine, we can work a couple examples here. So I'm going to use the shortcut to go home to CD. So now we're back in um, our home, and I'll I'll create a few subdirectories here. So I'm going to use the command make directory my dir1, my dir2, and list the directory. And now you see that they're there. Um, so we can also create a directory inside, say my dir1. Uh, make directory my dir1. Um, we'll create another directory called another directory. And then we can ls my dir1, um, my dr1. Uh, and there you see that. Now you, there is an option to make directory that will allow you to, in one step, um, create a directory and a subdirectory, and that is with the dash p. So we can say make dir dash p uh, my directory three, and inside of it uh, my dir four. So that will create both my dir three and my dir four inside of it. So if we ls my dir three, you can see my dir four is inside of it. Uh, so we can also remove directories with the rmdir command. That only works uh, if the directory is empty. So if the directory is empty, meaning there's no subdirectories or files inside of it, then we can use remove directory, rmdir. If it is not, uh, then we can use the remove command, which we're going to talk more about later, but that's remove, and we have to use it with the dash r option. The dash r means recursively. So move recursively my dir will remove um, the directory my dir and anything inside of it. So again, uh, back to cloud nine. Since a few, since my dir two should be empty, my dir two um, is an empty directory. We can use the command remove directory my dir two. Now you see it's gone. Um, however. Uh, my dir1 and my dr3 are not empty, so we'll need to actually use the remove command with the dash r option. My dir1 that removes my dir1 plus uh, the directory that was inside of it. And, and finally, we'll just run that same command again uh, on uh, the third one there. So now they're all gone. So uh, copy, <coughs> uh, if we have a file named file1 and we want to copy it to file2, we just run the command like that. And directories we have to use again with the dash r option. This means recursively that will copy not only the directory but any directories inside of it as well. So then we have also move. If we have a file named file1 and we want to move it to file2, uh, this essentially renames file one to file two. Uh, however, if we have, say, two files that we want to move into a directory, then file one, file two, uh, we can move both of those files at once inside my directory with this type of command. So again, let's create a few files. So now we have a couple of files, file one, file two. If I want to move file one, uh, to file three, that essentially is going to rename file one to file three. So now you see file three, but no longer a file one. 
uh, if we want to first make a directory and then move both files inside of it, we can use the command move file to file three inside my directory. Uh, and so now you see the files are gone and we can likewise copy those files, say copy my directory file two uh, back to file one in the current directory. And then uh, finally, if we want to copy the entire directory, so copy my directory, um, this is not, I'll, I'll go ahead and show you this won't work uh, if we just do this because um, we didn't use the recursive option. So we have to go back, put the dash R there, and then we have a new directory, my directory, um, new, that is a copy of my directory with the files inside of it. So we've already uh, looked at deleting, but we can delete files the same way we delete directories with uh, the remove option. Um, uh, you know, we, we can use a wildcard, so if we have multiple files that we'd like to delete at once, we can use a wildcard option. This would delete both file one and two. Um, and you have to be really careful with this because you could potentially delete, um, like for example, if you were to run this command, uh, remove recursively, forcefully, root with an asterisk, this would remove your entire hard drive. Now, of course, usually you, don't, you wouldn't, as a user, you wouldn't have permission to do this, um, but, uh, but it is a potential hazardous. So if you're worried about uh, the danger of remove, then you can use this command to interactively remove files. So we'll go ahead and clean up uh, the work that we were doing here, and I'll show you an example of that. So if we were to, uh, for example, run remove-i for interactive, uh, the contents of my directory, then it's going to bring up and, and ask us, do we want to remove these files? So yes, I want to remove file 2. Yes, I want to remove file 3. Right? Uh, and then I can remove the directory like we did earlier. Likewise, uh, I can remove file one. Uh, I guess, yeah, I should show you uh, an example of using the wild card. So I'll create file one and file two again, and then I'll remove them with the wild card. So I'm going to remove file asterisk. That's going to remove both file one and two because the asterisk uh, will match, pattern match one and two. Right? So now you can see they're gone. And finally, we'll just clean up that last directory.